Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. Uh, really excited to be shooting this video from uh, probably my favorite city on the planet, uh, Victoria on Vancouver Island in, on the west coast of Canada. Um, beauty is, weather's nice here, um, pretty much 12 months a year uh, in relation to the rest of Canada anyway. So we're gonna show you a bunch of different things on this project. We're not going uh, over the top. It's not an overly big home, but we're gonna show you uh, some really cool ways to get the most bang uh, for your buck out of using uh, really, uh, a few of our staple lights and primarily our up and accent light. Uh, we're going to use this in a lot of areas just to get some um, reflective light off a lot of uh, features and trees and stuff that are here uh, to highlight pathways and, and different garden areas uh, without having to use a lot of path and area lights. Um, we're also going to be using these uh, as a down light to help uh, create some functional lighting in some dark areas, some driveway areas. So we're going to show you some tree lighting tips as well as a bunch of other tips. Uh, so excited for this. Uh, shooting from Vancouver uh, or Victoria on Vancouver Island and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Well, on this project we're going to be mounting a lot of lights up in the trees and kind of down lighting, getting those lights up nice and high, 20-25 feet up there, shining through the branches so we can kind of create some shadowing down on the ground here. So the um, thing with that is the, the wire for the fixtures we have is only, um, it's only about 10 feet long so I don't want to have a big waterproof connector hanging halfway down the trees uh, one thing you can do if that's something you have is just go buy a junction box at uh, you know the home depot store or lowe's or whatever it is um, and just put that connection in one of those just so you don't have to look at it at least it hides it another option that we often use is these um, these shrink wrap connectors again you can get them at any home improvement store um, what i like about them is they are gel filled here so once they get sorry <laughs> be on me here um, but they are gel filled so once they heat up the gel actually seals around the connection um, and they're very inconspicuous so that's why I like using them so um, we're gonna use them for this so I've got my my wire to my fixture so I want to make that a lot longer and then I can make my connections down in the ground and stuff but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, I've got my wires I'm just gonna slide my tube on because you need to get your tube on the wires first uh, so we got that on and one thing I do is I cut if you can see here I cut one of them a little bit shorter than the other and I'll show you why I do that it's it's basically so I can cheat and just use one of these as opposed to having to use two um, which same as any of the connections usually you have to make two for each fixture because you have two wires but we're gonna cheat a little bit and I'll show you how um, so basically what I've done is with my wire that's going out into the ground and my fixture wire I have one longer and one shorter so I'm gonna take the longer one and I'm gonna connect it with the shorter one and I'm actually just gonna twist tie those up. Just twist them together uh, nice and good. And then I'm gonna just bend one of them so it kind of looks like this, right? I don't know if you can see that. So I've got it uh, like this and I've just got it bent and then I'm gonna twist the other two together. Um, and I'll show you in a second why I do that. And then we're gonna twist that is so that I can go now and I can bend these like this and the connections aren't going to be touching each other see how they're separated so they're not going to be touching each other inside the same um, inside the same shrink wrap connector they're both in there they're not touching something else you can do just to make sure is sometimes I'll um, I'll put some electrical tape just around those just to make sure those connections don't touch um, and then I'll go and I will shrink wrap that together so how you do that is very simple is you just need a, a torch of some kind and then you just uh, lightly warm that up and you watch it shrink. You're gonna be careful not to get too close and burn anything. Make sure all the wires are still inside. Um, it's pretty hot afterwards, so give it a good little um, I just try and seal it up a bit, but you can see the ooze is kind of coming out a little bit, so it's all waterproofed in there. And once it solidifies, it's pretty hard, and you are not pulling those wires apart. So uh, if you're doing any tree lighting or need to uh, hide some wire and extend it and make a pretty inconspicuous connection, uh, shrink wrap connectors is a really good way to go. Um, so we've ran all our wire to all our lights, but uh, something I always talk about is leaving lots of extra wire, even though I think this is where we're gonna have this light tonight. When I come back at night, we might wanna move it two, three feet that way or four feet this way or whatever. 
I've got 10 feet of extra wire around this and that's that's standard what comes on this fixture so you don't need that much but even two three extra feet of wire so that you have a little bit of play and then also if later down the road because this is our last light on the line say we wanted to add some more lights down the road there well I have a whole bunch of extra wire that I can tap into and I can keep my run going assuming I have the right transformer and all that kind of stuff which I'll talk about in a bit but extra wire extra wire extra wire it doesn't cost that much in relation to how much of a headache it's going to be if you don't leave it so leave extra wire at every fixture and even some spots along the way is going to save you a whole bunch of headaches if you ever have any ambitions of expanding as i know it looks like i'm in the jungle i'm not in the jungle i'm still on a project here on vancouver island uh, hence you'll hear a lot of uh, traffic still so you'll know i'm not in the jungle but i wanted to take this opportunity to talk a little bit more again about wiring uh, it is the question I get asked all the time and like I've said in a lot of my videos and if you want more detail on how to wire your lights uh, go to YouTube search lighting doctor wiring diagram there's a great video uh, with some really good close-ups and explanations and stuff but I'm just gonna show you a little bit more um, of a connector that I like using these DBRY connectors again because like I say with any connector you use and I don't care what it is or what make or what brand um, but it needs to have some waterproofing with some kind of gel filled tube or something like that and some kind of good mechanical connection that will keep the wires from pulling apart that's why I like these but um, you know what I'm gonna show you here is is what we call daisy chaining because I always get asked well can I daisy chain or do I got a hub method and it's probably because you've watched a lot of videos that talked about halogen lighting uh, where you really have to be careful with voltage drop and all that kind of stuff if you're using a good LED system um, you're really not going to have to worry too much about that so I usually tell people you can just go ahead and daisy chain all that means is just wire your lights in sequence for whatever is the easiest possible for you but then if you have one light or two lights or three lights off in the distance and you need to kind of tee a line out you can do that too and you don't again you don't really have to worry about uh, voltage drop if you're using an LED system so that's an example of kind of what we're going to do here I've got um, I've got my wire coming in from uh, my last fixture and then I've got my wires my 12-2 wires going out to my next fixture and then I need to run another line out to three four lights out there that's where I'm gonna use these guys here so how I do that is basically I take one wire from my uh, from my last fixture coming in and I take one uh, of the 12-2 wires coming or going out to the next fixture I'm gonna Put those together and then i'm going to take my third wire that's going out to uh to my other fixture again there's going to be two wires there so i'm going to take one of those i'm going to tie that in there and actually i'm going to shoot a little bit on this one because i've actually got another uh wire that i'm going to fit in there and that's the beauty of of these guys uh, because they're bigger connectors, I can sometimes even put four wires in there. So I'm not only teeing off, I'm also doing it at a fixture. So I'm wiring a fixture in at the same time that I'm teeing off because these are big enough to do that. And anytime you go to tee off, I always recommend trying to do it at a fixture or some kind of junction point so that if there's ever an issue and I, those three lights aren't working and everything else is, I get a pretty good idea that this is gonna be where my issue is and I know where to find that connection so I can go dig that up and check that out. So anyway, you basically screw that moret onto all those wires that we just put together. You slide them into the tube, push it all the way in so it gets all that gel and then you just pull the wires apart, snap down the bottom of the tube until you hear that snap and then it's good to go. And then you're gonna do that with the other set of wires you have, your wire coming in, your 12 gauge wire coming in, your 12 gauge wire coming or going out. And then you've got your other wires. Again, same thing, two connections, wrap all those up, put on your, your moret, get that nice and tight. Slide it into your waterproof gel filled tube. then just pull those wires together snap down the bottom and there you go and I promise you 
these wires are not coming apart that's again why i like these waterproof mechanical connection they're not going to pull apart any wiring connections you use that's what you got to do this is how you tee off a line if you need to do that daisy chain if you can make your life as easy as possible install led stay away from halogen it just doesn't make sense anymore and it will make your life a lot easier so i'm going to try and show you uh, a little wiring tip here because this is a question i get all the time and guys will hook up all their lights and they get to the light and everything's working and they hook up their last light and all of a sudden it's not working uh, and it's typically because that last fixture on the line seems to tend tends to give people some confusion i can't even say it so uh so we're getting poured on here but i'm going to show you uh, the last fixture on the line here and how we're going to go and wire that and if you want a better uh, definition and diagram go to YouTube search lighting doctor wiring diagram and I give you a really really thorough example of this but so I've got my last fixture right here and I've got my my two wires that come off of that fixture right and then I've got my 12-2 wire that is coming to the last fixture so I don't have another wire going to another one this is it this is the end. So what most people do is they just end up using one connector and putting all the wires in and then it shorts everything. So, but that's, that's not how you do it. Even on this last fixture, you still need two of your connectors. So what you're going to do again, you're going to have your 12, two wire and you're going to split that and you're going to take one of those wires and you're going to throw it in the big port on your BBS two connectors. And then you're going to take one wire, from your actual fixture and you're gonna put it in one of the small ports on that same connector. So you're gonna have on the last fixture, you're gonna have one extra hole for wire. You don't need to use that. You've only got two wires coming in. And then you need to do that one more time because you still have another wire to your, from your fixture and you still have another wire, another 12-2 wire coming in. So same thing. You're gonna throw that 12-2 wire in the big port and you are gonna throw that small wire in the smaller port from your fixture and then still at that last light you still have the two connections the only difference with this and one in line is one in line that extra hole is going to have the 12 2 wire that goes out to your next light on both of these right because this is our last fixture you have that hole empty so um, I like using these BBS 2 snap lock connectors I also like using these um, these DBRY connectors, which I talked a lot about, which same idea, except the only difference is the wires just screw into this morette and this morette slides into this waterproofing tube. So it doesn't matter what you use. The big two things to keep in mind is one, some type of waterproofing. It's gotta be gel filled of some sort. Those connectors that you buy at Home Depot and places like that, that pierce the wire, um, stay away from those. If they have the, those connectors built right onto the fixture and you still want to use that fixture, cut them off and use a proper one that's uh, got some kind of sealant in it to make that a waterproof connection or I promise you, you'll be digging up that connection. And the other thing is something that has a mechanical connection. So what that means is something that will hold the wires from being pulled apart. These ones I like because they snap tight and once the wires are in there, they don't come out. Same with these. Once you got the wires in there and these big gel filled tubes and you snap this shut, you're not pulling the wires out of that. So some people will just use those gel filled morettes, which is fine, they have that waterproofing, but then you gotta wrap them with tape or zip tie the wires together, do something so you can't pull those wires together. Or again, I promise you, you're gonna be digging up down the road. So there's all kinds of other wire connectors that are out there, but they need those two components, waterproofing and that mechanical connection to keep those wires from coming apart. So hope that helps and we'll move on to the next step uh, after this. So we've pretty much wrapped up our project. I hope you guys have enjoyed that and found these videos helpful. Um, and again, landscape lighting is not that tough. I think anybody can do it. There's just a couple simple steps. I mean, obviously get your design, figure out what you want. If you need help with that, that's why we do our free consultations. Just email me some pictures and I can help you find out what's gonna work best on your property. We have our try it before you buy a light where basically you can buy one or two fixtures, go plug them into a battery pack, walk around the property and see what's gonna look good. So that's another tool to help you come up with the design. Once you got the design, you got your light, then you just go and you set them around the property, go and place them, start placing them, get a rubber mallet, do that, run your wire, leave extra wire as much as possible um, because you never know when you're gonna make mistakes or wanna add on down the road. Go and make your wiring connections. Just be sure you have those two properties that we talked about, waterproofing and that mechanical connection so they don't pull apart. 
Uh, once you got them wired, go and set up your transformer, hook everything up, and go and test those lights. Fire it on, make sure they're all working before you go and bury everything. And my suggestion, especially if you haven't done this before, is come back that first night before you go and bury everything. Make sure you have all the lights where you want them placed. Make sure you're getting the look that you want. And once you do that, then come back the next day, bury all your wire. There's all kinds of other videos that we have on YouTube for how to bury the landscape lighting wire, how to tunnel under sidewalks and so much more. If you have any questions about how to install your own landscape lighting, just go to YouTube and search lighting doctor, how to whatever, and I guarantee you'll find it. So I hope you guys find that helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to get your free consultation and send me your pictures at cal at lightingdoctor.ca.